Welcome to another edition of Politics Done Right. Today we have a, a councilman, a Houston councilman, uh, Michael Kubash. As you guys know, there's been a, a what seemed to have been a, a crime wave that's been played up a whole lot in Houston, Texas. And what we want to do is discuss some of the genesis of the problem, some of the solutions to the problem, and what one might believe is the problem. So welcome aboard Politics Done Right, Councilman Michael Kubash. How are you doing today? Thank you for having me, and hopefully we can clarify all this in the minds of the, the uh, citizens out there about what the real problem is. Okay, let's, let, let's first define what's the real problem as you see it. The problem is, as I see it, is the judges are not considering the habitual criminal history of these defendants and release them on free or low bonds, and they're going back out in the community and they're murdering people. Now, there's a lot of other issues that deal with misdemeanors, but I'm just now talking about felony cases. Misdemeanor cases, they're letting them out uh, on a free bond. Most of the cases get out for free or a very low bond. Uh, DWI is now $10 to get out or $100, where it used to be $1,000 or $500. Now, the problem is, is when there's no accountability, there's no responsibility. The bail system, and I used to be a part of it for 27 years, is a proven system of accountability where the person who is bonded out is responsible to somebody in their family, their employer, somebody who signed or co-signed the bond, holding them also accountable as well as the defendant. Right now, there's nobody accountable except the defendant. And if he doesn't show up, so what? He, he, it may never, his case may never get adjudicated. Okay, so your contention is that uh, if somebody has skin, I think, I think you are from the, the, the trend, the thought process that says if somebody has skin in a the game, they're likely to behave differently if they put money. I would think that a habitual criminal, whether they, th there's money in the game or not, it's not their habitual criminal, correct? Well, I didn't really understand that question, but I can tell you this. We have a proven system of accountability, the, the cash bail system, as they like to call it, where you have a surety. I, I never bonded anybody out of jail who paid me to bond them out. It was always a family member, a friend, a relative, a mother, a dad, an employer, a priest, a minister. And, and they bonded this person out. And I put my finger on them and said, you're responsible. Here's the documents you signed. They're going to have to go to court. If they don't, you and I are going to be up late at night drinking coffee, looking for this individual. And so the family had accountability. Many of them had to put up collateral, their home, their cars. And so it, it would not that we wanted their cars, not that we that we wanted their jewelry, but by having their jewelry, having their car titles, the, it put pressure on the defendant to show up because mama may lose her wedding ring. Mama may lose her car. So consequently, right now that doesn't exist. It it. I don't know of any misdemeanor cases where anybody has to pay hardly anything to get out. During the Hurricane Harvey, one guy was arrested five times for looting. And each time he was released to go back and loot again. Eventually, he never went to court. His case was never adjudicated. I don't know where he's at now. But if he crossed state lines, they would never go after him on a, on a misdemeanor case. Let me ask you a question. Are the judges following the laws, yes or no? That's a simple question. The, the, yes, they, okay, they are okay. following they, they, the law. The judges, are, and, uh, the, the judges are following the law. And the law was written where again? Well, the law is in the state of Texas. Okay, hold, 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 hold. Okay. Look, I mean, I remember I, I, I love to have conversation as long as everybody gets a chance to say the piece that they want to say. The laws, of, the bail laws were written in, uh, in the state of Texas by Congress, by our state legislature. So they're the ones responsible for the laws being effected and executed by the judges who were ever in Texas, correct? That's well, a simple question. Yeah. But no, judges don't have to follow the law. They they, to do judges, do ha judges do have to follow the law. They have discretion is what you want to say, though. They do yeah, have discretion. Because there is legislative, there's a discretion. separation between the legislature, the yes. judiciary, and the executive. So, so they, they, they can ignore some of the recommendations. I look at the statute as recommendations to the but judges not, that they just simply don't follow. Mr. Our Councilman Kubash, there is a law. And these judges are following the law. 
the question that, and I think if we're looking for accountability, and I, I want you, you know, we believe in accountability. Everyone should have accountability. The people who write the laws or our state, the people who run our state government as such, as the state government writing the laws. We also know that the bails bond people support many of these people who are writing the laws. Is that correct? Yeah, yes or no? That is correct. That's correct. Therefore, we have a bond issue, sir. You are absolutely correct. We have some judges that are maybe release people that they shouldn't release, but they don't know that they shouldn't, and they do release them. Agreed. I think we can postulate, both of us can postulate that. But thirdly, we are making, uh, uh, we, are, we are trying to effect policy today. And you tell me if you think I'm wrong or right. We are trying to effect policy today based on the false notion that there is a huge increase in crime wave based on people being released on bond. Isn't it true that it's only 2% recidivism with bond releases? True or false? That's false. Tell me what it is. I don't have the exact number. But I, I do, that's and that's the number, sir. The number is 2%. There's, I mean, 2%. the reason I asked okay. you, you had the number is 2%. I'm not, I'm not gonna argue that point with you. And that's good, Thank, I appreciate that. But secondly, sir, um, it's not only 2%, but there has not been a marginal increase in the crime rate. In fact, the total crime rate in Houston has actually dropped, correct? The reporting of crime has no, dropped. No, no. Crime again, hasn't again, we only work with numbers. Isn't it true that the crime tell, rate in Houston you, you has dropped? You sound decreased? like Mayor Turner. You tell the story you want to tell. No, 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 sir. No, sir, <laughs> sir. I, I, you're, we are together. We, are to, we, we want, no, we we're want not, a we're safe not, Houston. We're not together on this at all. We no, want no, a safe not. Houston. We want now, a safe now, Houston. Now, that's a fact. Both of us want that. What I yeah. don't want, and I want you to explain to me, what I don't want is a system that favors those with capital. In other words, here's what you told me, and I, I gave you extensive amount of time to speak, and I didn't interrupt you or anything of that nature. I made you speak. You gave your impression of people having responsibility for bonds, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, true? Now, here's the deal. If we were to change these laws, and I wish they did in, Texas, the legislature that says, lock them up those people with X, Y, Z things. In other words, our Texas legislature is responsible for writing these laws. If you want these people locked up, write it into law, put the responsibility on the people who write the laws. Now that said, when you give discretion to a judge, you open the political game. In other words, what you open up for is for uh, somebody to say, the activists like others would come out and say, well, look, if John Peter is from, the, from a poor family and John Amos is from a rich family, it doesn't matter how much money the judge says they have to pay. John Amos, from the fact that he is wealthy, whether he's a good guy or not, can get out on bond. True? That's a, that's a simple question. When you say John Amos can get out on bond, on what type of a charge? On any charge that the state legislature has put that there's a bond that can be offered to, for this particular crime. But, but the, they have written in the law that they must consider the, the defendants, uh, who this defendant is, the state of mind. Sure. It, does he have, is he likely to reoffend? Is he a danger to the public, to society? I agree. Yeah, I mean, those All kind subjective of things, terms, right? Yeah, the, those, but, but the judge still doesn't have to, doesn't have to, uh, to follow. Uh, many of the times, the, the district attorney has asked for a no bond, and the defendant was released on free bonds, where they gave him two PR bonds. The, 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 the person that killed Rosalie Cook, the 80-year-old senior, had been 22 misdemeanor convictions, uh, nine felony convictions. He, and he, he should would, be locked up. He should well, be locked but, up. But the judge, a, a Republican judge, not a Democratic judge. Doesn't matter. Did I mention the word judge. Republican or Democrat here? I'm, I'm telling you that. He, he, gave, the, uh, he gave him a $5,000 PR bond and a $15,000 PR bond and then waived the fees on the PR bonds because I think it's a 3% fee. 
right. and, and let him out. 20 days later, he found Rosalie Cook coming out of a Walgreens and he killed her. And, and his son said, uh, her son said, look, he could have just pushed mama down. Mama couldn't have got up. He didn't have to kill her. But he stabbed him in the chest and killed him. You know, all of that is, sir, uh, Mr. Uh, or Councilman Kabash, I want to be respectful. All of that is right. And I'm with you there. Those are, these are. I, I just want the public to be safe. And, and I, I want and, the judges. And let to me be, tell you how you make the that. public safe. And, and, and then let's talk about it. Because I hear a lot of people really getting on these judges. And it really upsets me. And I'm a, I'm a, I'm a very pragmatic, very independent activist journalist. Well, and some of them got you, voted out yesterday. You know that. Yes, I know a whole lot of them did, and I think unwarranted. <laughs> let me and let me tell you what I mean by that. Well, let I'm me, glad they're gone. Let me tell you what I mean by that, sir. Okay, because here's my fear. Remember what we said: two percent recidivism is what we have. So there are some otherwise people that really would do well and have a break with the bond that judges are going to be fearful to give because of uh, of a because of this political thing we put around making most Houston and Houstonians believe that the crime wave is going out of control so much crazier than it used to be. Here's what I want to ask you, sir. The reason why there are so many guns on the streets right now is anybody can have a gun in a car. So we have the wild, wild west in Houston, true? Anybody can have a gun. And we have a lot more of these people who get pissed off in a car and shoot each other, right? But I don't, I don't know that everybody's got a gun. No, but what but I'm I saying is now that we, if they do have one. Now we have an increase in guns that anybody can get without a license. And we have- You don't have shoot. to have a license. You and don't you can carry it with you without a permit. There you go. And what it means now is we, and how comes we don't attribute all the new shootouts with these new laws that goes ahead and have the wild, wild west in Texas? It's simple. More as soon as we got these increase in guns in the streets, a lot more shooting started to occur. That number is quantifiable. How comes we don't? How comes we don't raise hell about that? Do we care about people? So let's raise hell about having all these guns with kids, 18, 19 year olds with guns now. Why don't we raise hell about that? And the other thing that I want to ask you about, Councilman, because you are one of good. You're a good Councilman. I, I know you. Okay. Let me ask you another question. Why okay. don't we? really go to the genesis of the of the crime problem in this city in this state in this country you are a politician you can do something about it tell me why don't we actually give the type of policies within communities that prevent these things from happening well you know what causes it yes, you know we, we 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 can we can we can imprison somebody and it costs us more to put somebody in, in prison than it does to send them to Harvard University. For, That's why I love for, you, because you know the solution. You know the solution. I, I, yeah. It's education. And we you have know to the give solution, them an opportunity. sir. That's why I talked to um, Millard House, our new superintendent, about putting uh, uh, the vocational training back in our schools. They took it out. And, and and some people don't want to be doctors. Some people right. don't want to be lawyers. They they want to be mechanics. They want to work with their hands. They they want to be carpenters. They they want to learn skills. Why not? Uh, uh, skilled positions. I hire people all the time that have skills. Councilman, whether or not it's are... putting on a roof, or or or, or, or working on plumbing, or, or electrical. We got to have skilled people. Councilman, and, and you're if, so right. And, and, and unless we invest in that, we're going to continue to see more of of what we don't like, and that. If a man's got a job, if, if he can take care of his family, he don't have time to go out and rob and steal. Amen. Councilman, you believe what I believe. And I know that when we look at things from a humane point of view, when we look at humanity, we have a tendency to come up with the same answers. So you know what's causing the problems out there. Yes, we have these killers that we need to get off the streets. Yes, we had some few killers that got laid, laid uh, that got put down bad i mean put put out back into the streets that shouldn't have there's a few of that but i wish we wouldn't turn it into a political issue and i wish we would go out there and like you said councilman which you are absolutely right i agree with you we need to start working on education and not just trying to make these things into political issues from kindergarten on amen brother amen not 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 don't wait until you get out of high school when they can't even read yet get do it at kindergarten on where where well, they have an opportunity to learn to read and and to understand, and, and we need to teach them. Uh, we need to teach them how to be self sufficient. Mr. Somebody's, Michael, Councilman some Michael, some of these kids Kabash. don't eat unless they come to school. They right. don't have that. 
They didn't have food at home. We, we have to provide for them. If you don't eat, you're not going to learn. Councilman Kubash, you know the answers. And you know what? There are a lot of people who know the answers. And it behooves me why more of us don't do what's necessary to get the job done. Because you know it. You know the community. You know that we can solve a lot of the crime problems by just doing things right. And it's not a... I, I, what I would like from a, from a moral person like you is to get off the bond bandwagon and get onto a bandwagon. No, I'm serious. And get onto a band, get onto a bandwagon that solves problems. This bond Thanks. issue is not solving problems. This bond issue is getting Texans against each other. It's getting Texas pissed off at people they, that they shouldn't be pissed off. And the people that they need to be pissed off are the people who hold the strings to government. Example, we need to make sure these people have good health care. We need to make sure all these people are well taken care of. Why the hell not do it, Councilman? I, I agree. And you got to remember that about 96% of the wealth is controlled by about 6% of the population or less. Somebody said two. And 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 we, we, we've got to do better to help our people. Mister, I mean, you, I mean we, we've got to do better. Councilman, you're you're a good man. Look, you're a good man. And let me tell you something. And you know, you know, you know what needs to be done. And what I implore to all politicians of every stripe, whether Democrat, Republican, independent, or whatever, drop the drop these notions about gotcha points and let's work for the community. And I know you're willing to do that as well, sir. Well, I, I would hope that the judges would consider the violent criminal history, listen to what the DA says. And and uh, and work on trying to get these people some help. Don't don't release the mentally ill. You know, uh, Judge Hildalgo built a, a built a, a a a hospital over there at NRG. Why not? Why not use? And then they tore it down. Nobody ever got treated. Why not? Why not use it to help the people that needed help to, to bring. bring people in? Look, sir, bring people into the com from the community into these solutions that you have as well. Work together with the, with the leaders and, I, and, and we'll get things done. We just have to get out of this. We just have to get out of this morass that we're in right now and work well, together. Good people working I, with good people. Well, I, that's why years ago I was I had two foster group homes. I had 47 foster children, two foster group homes. I, I adopted a child. I had six living in my own home. And, and unless you are caring about people of all races, of all, of all ages, you got to help people. People are needing somebody to love them. Michael, Councilman Michael Kubash, <laughs> a good man, somebody that's going to drop this darn, uh, this issue about the bond thing, because you are much better than that. Thank you so kindly for having been on Politics Done Right. Thank you for having me, Agoberto. We spend a lot of time deconstructing the news, trying to, trying to parse it into a form that everybody can understand. We try to find those little nitpicks where uh, it goes, it flies above the fray, etc. If you really like these videos that we do, I want to ask a big favor. Please go ahead, number one, subscribe to our channel, and number two, please join if you can. Thank you so kindly for watching. Keep watching. Please remember to share. We must populate the entire internet with our progressive message, a message that we know is what most Americans say that they want. So help us please join.